Good evening. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to tonight's Policy Geeks in a Pint. My name is Robert Ermel and I'm the Director of Operations for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. To find out more about our institute and what we do, I invite you to take a look at the handbills you found on your tables tonight or to check out our website at MIPR.ca. Some interesting events have happened in Manitoba provincial politics since we last checked in. And uh, we'll check in with our media panel this evening, see what issues have arisen over the last six months, what noteworthy events have shaped the political scene, and how future events will impact our province. Our moderator this evening is Dr. Shannon Sanford, Perspectives and Politics Editor at the Winnipeg Free Press. Our panel this evening is Mr. Richard Cliche from CGOB 680, Mr. Steve Lambert from the Canadian Press, and Ms. Mary, Ms. Mr. Mr. Steve Lambert from the Canadian Press, and Ms. Mary Ann Walsh from the Winnipeg Free Press. Um, their detailed biographies can also be found in your water papers. Following tonight's event, I invite you to fill out your feedback forms. Many of our event ideas come from you, so please fill them out, and we'll see what we can do in the future for you. I'll now pass the mic to Shannon to start us off for the evening. Enjoy. Great. Thank you. Well, it has been indeed a very exciting last six months last year in uh, politics in Canada, Manitoba, and in the city as well. We've seen all sorts of changes take place, including a small coup with the uh, sitting premier, and the first time ever where a sitting premier has continued to sit as the leadership is being debated. And we've got a new Métis mayor, the first time ever in, uh, in Winnipeg, and indeed in October, Ryan Bowman uh, was an interesting um, uh, interesting addition to City Hall and some new city councillors as well. So we're going to start then uh, by asking you some written note questions, and then we're going to do a free-for-all as we kind of move along. Um, we'll start with Richard, uh, the opening question for the panel. Um, for you, is the new council and the new mayor, in your opinion, uh, living up to expectations, Richard? Yes. Um, we're not even 100 days in, so I always say yes, but. Uh, but I'll say yes in the sense that um, there was certainly a sense that early on that there would be an agenda focused on uh, renewal in the sense of, of trust and trying to regain that trust of the public. So when you have so many new faces, and I'm impressed in the fact that the mayor has been able to take uh, very different attitudes and, 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 and people with different political backgrounds and, and with the odd little hiccup here and there, um, we had um, an issue between um, one of his lieutenants uh, in the budget process in the Winnipeg Police Service. I kind of chalk that up as a bit of a, a rookie mistake and not being able to, to read the room properly and, and somebody um, just just basically deciding that he's going to go with the flow and not understand the repercussions of taking on uh, anybody with the police service. We can talk about that. But as far as expectations are concerned, we can jump right to the news of, of, of the day. And, um, and what happened today with, uh, with Center Venture is that uh, this is a fascinating town uh, because <laughs> in, in many ways, you know, you go out and you have conversations with people and, um, you know, I'd love to check the tape from six months ago and, and replay some of it now and, and uh, whether or not we got any of it right. But you have conversations with people and then you, and then you see um, stuff materialize sometimes months and maybe years down the road. And obviously today I think uh, what happened at City Hall was that um, Executive Policy Committee has voted um, because of issues surrounding uh, a piece of land opposite the Convention Center that was, um, was put up and, and the former Carlton Yen uh, had some real problems there and they decided that uh, it would get bought and perhaps parceled out to be part of uh, uh, a revitalization of downtown. And I remember two, oh, maybe three years ago, talking to people from True North and said, this is what we'd like to do downtown. And um, uh, really based on what we see in, in, in Toronto and, and based in, in Vancouver and Los Angeles as far as uh, True North Square is concerned. And you kind of file that away and say, okay, well, let's see what, what, what's going to materialize down the way. Um, 
And I think today, in the last few days, has been the real test of that that new agenda because the optics are uh, Mr. Chipman endorsed Brian Bowman. And Brian Bowman knows very well that he cannot at all be seen, either real or perception, um, as far as anything, uh, as far as favoring um, anybody from um, uh, from True North or, or any organization or anybody that endorsed him. So, on the one hand, I reckon that this is all part of the process that you want to be as clean as possible and be part of uh, a new, renewed process at City Hall. Um, I haven't even touched on the, 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 the kind of the budget challenges that, uh, that the new regime has, but I think as far as point number one is concerned, in meeting the test of this is a new regime, a cleaner regime, um, work in progress, but I think they've taken some pretty important steps. Okay, Steve, what do you think? Well, it's, it's early days yet, yes. but um, I think he's shown an ability to reach across the floor. We don't see as great a divide, nearly as great a divide, as we did last time between, say, Sam Cates and somebody like Jenny Gervais. He seems to be much more of a consensus builder. Uh, again, it's early days yet. And um, we'll, time will tell whether he is going to uh, set up real changes. Um, I'm encouraged already. He's taking fewer selfies and he's down, down to business. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, that's, that's fewer than you? Fewer than you. Go ahead, Maria. Just weigh in here. Uh, I, uh, I echo what uh, both of my friends say. I would add that so far the last three months have been largely, largely reactive. Bowman has had to react to an RCMP investigation of his staff and cyber venture and um, you know a, a, a thousand, and the racism article and a, a thousand things. Uh, in fact, Joshi's uh, departure, I guess we can't call it that yet, but that looks like that's where it's going. And so he's been largely uh, reactive. So we haven't actually seen him really advance any of his own ideas. But I think I think we have to acknowledge that his reactions have been remarkably deft. Um, I think the way he handled the McLean's article was, I, I haven't really seen anything like that in Winnipeg at City Hall in the 13 years I've been here. Um, and it was extremely well handled. And even silly things, not silly, but they're important actually, but things like going to um, conduct the Sym Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra and being incredibly public about, um, about that. And everybody thinks it's delightful and totally charming and he's out there, he's out there, he's, he's seen. We never used to see Sam Cates at stuff. And that counts in Winnipeg. Um, so so I, 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 I try to, I, even despite my innate cynicism, I'm pretty impressed with him so far. And I think the people that I talk to who would not be normally inclined to like a sort of center-right-ish kind of guy are pretty impressed with him. you got to wonder uh, whether or not he would like to have a private conversation with Mr. Cates at some point in other time, given the agenda that he's uh, inherited. So based on that, let's start uh, with you again, Richard, and what you think are the biggest issues that Council uh, and New Mayor are facing in the next six months, including the, uh, the unfortunate um, budget, budget, and budget will be um, front and center pretty, pretty quickly here, given the ambitious agenda that he came in on. Um, and of course, you know, cities rely on, on on provincial governments, and at some point we can talk a little bit about that as far as getting big ticket items uh, going. Um, I, I, and again, I think we can't get swept up in in the the expectations, right? Because I do expect in the next week or so the stories to surface and they have periodically about you know how tough times and tough decisions were faced at City Hall and then boom the budget comes out and it's not as bad as we think it is. Um, uh, so you know obviously there's there's um, an opportunity still to to raise property taxes and I think you'll see that here. Um, our economy, our tax base continues to grow, so I'm not as worried about um, what he's able to accomplish this year as opposed to the ambitious agenda over the next several years, and he has to lay the groundwork on that. Um, and again, I, I think he's toying about taking on some of the, the bigger issues here uh, as far as you know, police and, and fire budgets, but Wow, uh, I remember early on having conversations with, with Sam Hates and before that, um, Susan Thompson. 
you know, talking about, you know, we've got to take on some of the, you know, the real, uh, real tough areas that we spend a lot of money on, and we just kind of remember saying, well, good luck with that. Um, you know, given given uh, how you know the theory versus reality works. So the real tough one, I think, is the budget in the short term. Uh, I think you will accomplish um, on renewal when it comes to um, policies, procedures. Um, he'll he'll hire that CAO probably come summer. Uh, I think it'll be a little while yet before they before he has somebody in place. Steve. Fifteen months without a CAO, by the way, right now, and counter. It's oh. pretty bad. Go ahead, Steve. I, I agree completely with the assumption uh, of the budget because when you come into office and you've made all sorts of promises, yeah. lack of transit, for example, uh, you then have to live up to those promises, find the money for it. Um, so I expect we'll see some projects uh, delayed some uh, plans abandoned or at least put up temporarily and um, that may be his, his first test in terms of popularity where he might bring into a situation where he can say, you promised this and it's not going to come just yet. Uh, the only thing I would add, it's, it's, I, I totally agree, it's all about the budget. And I think, I think we're going to have, if the last few days are any indication, a ridiculously bad pothole uh, spring. And we love pothole stories, journalists love them, the public eats them up, it's a huge topic. But I think this year we might have, especially after last year and all the frozen pipe infrastructure issues, I think we're actually going to have to have a real conversation finally about how we deal with that long term. Excuse me, long term, and I'm hoping that as part of this budget process, which will be in the midst of pothole season, essentially, we will see a real plan to improve the streets. And I, I say that as somebody who actually thinks that we should never build another road in Winnipeg, and we should totally invest all our money in rapid transit. But we do have to have a, a conversation about potholes, and it's inevitable, I think, this year. So yeah. Okay, just going off this script really, really quickly, because we were talking about budgets and broken promises. Does a wise politician break promises in the first year and then try to build it back in the last two years? When's the strategy good for breaking uh, the, the election promises? What do you guys think? I, I think the first year is absolutely correct, because that's when you want to do your tough measures. You look at Ralph Biden in Alberta. All the tough measures were all the first year. He created a lot of animosity, and over time, Enough people were assuaged that he kept getting bigger and bigger majorities. And he did plan in his first year, his first uh, first year of his first term, and uh, raised the ground. Richard, you're you're nodding your head and sort of. In well, I think you have to look at the election cycle, not in isolation, but the other election cycles. I think here uh, you have infrastructure money that's going to be spent by federal and provincial governments, and uh, the city of Winnipeg is oh oh we've got money for that. Um, so you're going to have uh, federal and provincial dollars available this year as far as promises being made. So from his perspective, I think he wants to, uh, in this budget, lay the groundwork. And if you have to deliver some tough, tougher news, I think looking at the other cycles, he's probably looking at next year. Uh, and then you're thinking about it because I think municipal politics are a little bit different than, than provincial and federal politics. I think provincial federal politics, you, you do the, the, the tough deeds early. Um, municipal, you are so reliant on other levels of government on the big ticket items. So I think, um, you know, I don't think Bowman has a lot of, a lot of room on, on, on that area. But again, um, he's the first mayor, I think, of the last several mayors that has come in really not promising a, 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 a tax freeze in, in that sense. So he does have some wiggle room where his predecessors haven't for a bit. Attorney, did you have a, any kind of strategy you want to share no. or your thoughts on this? No, the only thing I would add is that even though in his sort of first year he's got this honeymoon period, council is essentially on side with him, but he has to learn, he and his staff have to learn all about the city budget and he literally got elected and it was right into budget time, and that is a learning curve. Right. So I think that probably works against him in his, you know, all the first year things he wants to do. Okay. Thank you.